All right, here we go. I think we are back. I think we had some dodgy internet connections there. Uh, I don't quite know what happened. And at one point, I got kicked out of the whole Zoom application. I think someone else had tried to get on it, or I don't know. But um, here we go. Take two. Worship at home with Matt Lockwood. <laughs> this is fun, isn't it? Right, let me, just, uh, let me just bring this back up on Facebook so I can just keep an eye on how things are going. That's better. That's looking better. Uh, it's still dark. I need some more light. Here we go. It didn't help to have that light there. That's better. Okay. <sighs> Deep breath. Start again. Here we go. Welcome to Worship at Home with me, Matt Lockwood. And uh, this, so this is our second take. I'm not quite sure what happened before, but here we go. We're going to be talking uh, and chatting with three guests. Um, if you caught the first part of the, of the live stream, you will already know who they are. So I'm just going to bring them straight back in again. Here we go. There's Diane, there's Emma, and there's Kirsty. How are you guys? Thank you for sharing with me. <laughs> oh, it's all good fun. We've become so dependent on technology right now that when it doesn't work, it's like everything collapses and here we go. All right, well, thanks for bearing with me. So, okay, just to quickly then recap then. So we have Emma Hardcastle Mills, who is from Family Church Waterlooville, worship leader there. Uh, we've got Kirsty Gowing, who is worship leader at Sunrise Church in Hastings. And we've got Diane, who is part of Family Church Portsmouth. It is really good to have all three of you with me. So, right, let's get back into uh, where, we, where we were cut off just a moment ago, and we're halfway through listening to uh, Emma share your story. So I'm going to have to ask you to start all over again, Emma, if that's all right. Uh, <laughs> sorry, you got to remember everything you just said. Well, at least then you can edit out the bits that you didn't really want to say. So, <laughs> Emma, why, why don't you tell us... Uh, what it was that that moment where you you went from just singing songs to actually feeling like you're engaging in worship and worshiping God, connecting there. Okay, so <laughs> um, to recap, um, I've always had an appreciation for music. I've always loved music, um, dancing to it, singing along to it, uh, listening to it. Um, so historically in church, I've always enjoyed the music side of things, but. Um, my engagement into it was determined by whether I liked the song um, or not. And so if, there, if a song was uh, played that I thought, oh, yes, I love this song, it'd be like, yeah, I could really jump in um, and enjoy it. And, and if it was a song that perhaps I wasn't so keen on, I'd be like, mm. okay. <laughs> <laughs> that was about it. Um, so then I mentioned about in one particular um, service where God challenged me and um, chastised me slightly as well, um, was that who was I? Who was I to be saying, eh, I'm not really feeling this song or, yeah. oh yeah, great song. It was, it was very, very surface way of, of looking at it. And the, I suppose, scary thing is, is that I probably thought about worship in that sense for quite a long time. I didn't really know any different. So that was just what, what my natural response was. And so God challenged me is that um, my response shouldn't be natural, first of all. It shouldn't be out of, out of me. Mm -hmm. um, it should be um, from my spirit. Um, he's spirit. We are spirit be beings. And therefore, my response to any kind of worship song or praise song or whatever needs to be out of that first. So anyway. So then we fast forward slightly and um, there had been a, what I said before was a, a more of a transitional period. Mm -hmm. And to put it simply, um, I got to know who I was singing to. Yeah. And because I, I was saved, there was no doubt about that. I believed I had faith, um, but it was all about the relationship. And I spent time 
just seeking God and just, I, I had a hunger. That's where it came for, for us. I had a hunger because without that, we, we have nothing. We're not going to seek anything if we're not hungry for it. So I had a hunger and I just thought, Do you know what? I want to, I want to know what, what it means when God says that he inhabits the praise of his people. So I had this sort of there and I was like, what does that mean? What does that look like? What does that feel like? Um, so it just caused me to literally seek him in his word, spend time, on my knees to be quite honest with you most of the time that was pretty ugly but it's fine because no people apart from him so that's okay but um it was all about the relationship and during that period and it was a really really important period i didn't know at the time but it was a really really important period because it was then just before i was thrown and i was thrown into the worship team by amy and tim <laughs> <laughs> So I was like, what? No. So you know, I walked through this period. Um, I didn't realise actually how crucial it was. Yeah. Um, so what it what it came down to, I, I got to know who I was worshipping. So I could out of every any song that I hear now, mm. I, I just believe that any part of it can be used for his glory. That's what I believe. The, the, simplest of words the simplest of sentence can be used for his glory if he's in it mm. then it can be used for his glory so um that transitional period went on for quite some time yeah um, it, and to be honest even now it's something that i always go back to i always go back to um and the way that i like to think about it is it's the posture of my heart so where's my heart at when it comes to worshiping, when it comes to singing these songs, where's my heart? Because if it's me, then that's not good enough. If, sure. if it's me out of me, that's not good enough. It needs to be my heart completely surrendered, completely yielded to the Holy Spirit. And then that becomes worship. That's great. For me. That's really good. That's really good. Thank you, Emma. Yeah. That's really good. Um, okay, so Kirsty. Let's, let's move to you. So how, how would you describe that, that moment or moments? Um, I'll probably give a little bit of a backstory. Yeah. Um, if I'm right. <laughs> um, so when I joined Sunrise, I wasn't a Christian or anything like that. Um, I came from a non-Christian household. The reason I started coming to church was because my friend's parents ran the um, youth group. And um, how I got into the worship was one night we were waiting for this youth group to start and two guys walked down the stairs and I turned to my friend and I went, I'll have the one with the chin strap and you can have the other one. <laughs> <laughs> so, and it turns out he was the bass player. In uh -huh. the uh -huh. <laughs> we know where this one goes. <laughs> <laughs> I had two motives to why I wanted to get into worship um, because I wanted to get closer to him. Anyway, it, it, went, it, it went on and um, I did eventually become part of the worship team and I became a Christian. And um, there was one night, Kathy came down, who is our pastor um, at Sunrise. She came down to watch practices. Sometimes that's what she did back in those days. and. Um, being a 16 year old girl she came down and she was like we want you to smile more not have your hands in your pockets and me and one of the other girls got a bit offended and we walked off and when she dropped me home that night she said that she wanted to take me off worship and she wanted to take me off I think it was 10 weeks in total she took me off worship for and at the time I was livid we, we speak about it now and it's it's funny but at the time I was really, really angry and I sort of wanted to prove a point to her. Like I was like, I'm, I'm going to go to church still. I'm going to be there. I'm going to sort of serve in other places. And then it kind of made me feel that actually what I was missing within worship and how much I love to worship. And I love to see the congregation from that other angle, not mm. just sort of being the congregation, but to watch people worship as well. And I think that sort of kind of made that transition for me from just kind of singing the songs to actually worshiping and trying to get the congregation more into that place of worship and to worship along with them and have that connection. Yeah. And then, yeah. 
yeah. But eventually, with that guy, uh, we got married and had a baby. So, it was- <laughs> so that was good too. <laughs> it's funny, isn't it? It's funny how that you that God connects you to church in those ways. And they often do, like, you know, end up with marriage, but actually he has a greater purpose in it. And, um, yeah. Yeah, Yeah, even sort of Kathy says now that she's never been that hard on anyone that she saw in education, but that's because she saw saw the potential in my life. Yeah. And that's sort of coming from that angle. It's great to sort of hear. Yeah, fantastic. (laughs) Diane, let's move to you. Um... Well, I'm not a worship leader or in, um, as I say, in any of the bands or anything. That doesn't matter. But it's been really great listening to you guys because I think I've got a completely different perspective. So I've been a Christian for 10 years. Before that, very much I came out, always loved music, always was singing and stuff. I've been in choirs lots throughout school and Salvation Army. So often sang a lot of Christian songs, but I didn't have a faith or a belief. Yeah. I was always intrigued by the lyrics. I mean, some of them are quite, you know, quite old. I don't know if you remember one that said, that, you know, it's hard to dance with the devil on your back. Those are the sort of things of my genre I grew up with. So I was a bit <laughs> like, what's all this about? So very different. But I think it always, I think it was that beginning part that God was preparing in me. Mm. Because I remember the first day going into church and I'd been very fortunate. I had somebody that kept inviting me and she'd been praying for me for two years without me knowing. But as soon as I walked in, I felt that connection. And I think it was, it was with the worship songs. Mm-hmm. And I think from my point of view, from somebody who was non-Christian, who'd never had a Bible, didn't know the scriptures, etc. I loved the fact that Jesus uses the, the sort of format of, of worship to speak to people. And I just like straight away. In fact, while you were talking, you guys, I was remembering the song that was playing and it was, um, you probably recognize it, but the, the, the lyrics were nothing compares to your embrace. That was one line, which always so instantly connected. Um, and I run into your arms. Run, yeah. And that's how I felt. I was ready to meet God. He was ready to meet me. Yeah. So I, I sort of felt I had that connection initially because I think he's such a creative God and it was just great to, you know, speak to me in a, in low level scripture. Um, and then obviously as time went by, I was thinking that, especially listening to you guys, I think I relied very heavily and the expectation was that when I come into church as um, part of the congregation, I expect the worship team to almost open a portal for me to enter into that space with God. Yeah. Um, and if I didn't get that, I would be thinking, oh, that was, didn't work for me today. Whereas that isn't how I feel now. And it's trying to work out when that happened. And I think I'd probably been in church a good two years before that sort of connection between me and God. I didn't need the worship team anymore. Yeah. Um, and I certainly remember that transition where I was probably, you know, lifting my hands. I mean, now I certainly, I'm, I'm renowned for almost taking the, um, you know, the, the sort of the people that are coming around, you know, the stewards and stuff. I'm almost taking them out because I'm, I'm fully engaged <laughs> in there. You know, you know when I'm worshipping. Um, and I even, the connection of it, like I, I used to hear people saying, oh, I don't like going to another church because I'm used to my worship band. All of that is gone and I can go to any church, anywhere I can worship at home and get into his presence. And that's the transition where I don't need to be in church with a really great worship team opening that doorway for me. I can get in his presence instantly. That's um, great. And I've learned over the time as well that it's the lyrics are really, really strong, but it's the Bible, isn't it? And it's scripture. And I've found some of the things I do find myself doing now is that I will, if I'm reading the Bible, Bible, I'll start singing it. Yeah. Um, so that's a real transition. And it's almost like I don't need a worship band anymore to get in his presence. It's yeah. great. And it, it's a different level. And I think you can think of that corporate, you know, togetherness. But I certainly have had um, a real change where when I'm in church worshipping, it's as if I'm in my my study or my my bedroom with my Bible on my own. I absolutely blank everybody out and I'm there. And I think I was a member very early on as well, lots of worship leaders. And I think there is a there is a place for really um, strong worship leaders to guide the congregation. You know, people like myself that are new to church, etc. 
and about encouraging us to take away any distraction. Mm -hmm. And that's not easy because you can be in church and think, oh, you know, that person behind me, gosh, they're tone deaf. And then you think, well, I wonder if I'm tone deaf. What do I sound like? And I know it's a bit cliche when people say it's that audience of one, but actually it's about getting in his presence. It's about, you know what, I'm here to encourage everyone around me that, um, you know, we are here to to praise God at the highest level. Um, you know, and I always try to think of it as being in a football match, but praising, you know, the best yeah. goalkeeper of all um, yeah. and, and getting, you know, just increasing that vibe. And now I just think if we all like just let ourselves go, that encourages other people, I hope, yeah. or it gets me banned from the church. Um, <laughs> either way, I just, I, I absolutely found that transition and very much like Emma, um, like Kirsty was saying, it's relational, something, it's a heart connection suddenly with God where you really don't care about what other people think. It's yeah. about you and him. And I can feel that he speaks to me more when I'm worshipping sometimes. It's a little bit like when we say, you know, go to that quiet place and everything. Sometimes I think just by singing your own song to God yeah. also is another way of communicating with him. Yeah. Um, so does that make sense? To yeah, no, that's really, really good. And uh, so just to then to kind of wrap this up, going back again, um, start, maybe starting with you, Diane, if if there was something that you could say to someone who was who was struggling with uh, finding an expression of worship, understanding it, or um, like the like like for yourself in those first two years where you you kind of you almost carried along a little bit, but you may not necessarily understood what was going on, uh, or times where you felt like a little bit disconnected from what was going on. Yeah. What would you say to encourage someone to help them? connect uh, and find that place where like you, the three of you, you, you where you mm. you know it's real uh, like you were just saying Diane yeah. I think it's really important <clears throat> to worship at home on your own mm -hmm. and and realize that you don't need to be in the congregation and that in those times when sometimes you can be going through a really dark time and you can't even pray and you you just feel so disconnected and and i've heard it time and time again people say you can worship yourself out of that place and you really can and i've been on my knees in tears before now and been worshiping and even heard god say to me when i'm in a dark place worship me and i think if you can create that habit where you're at home on your own just worshiping god it can be your favorite you know put it on repeat if you have to yeah but get into that that mode that you're not in a crowd you're singled out and it really becomes a special time and i just feel that you do that more and more often you find that secret place that that go to safe haven where you are really in his presence and yeah. and i really feel that helped me a lot that's good how about you kirsty um yeah much of the same like when the last sort of few years we've kind of gone through a bit of a a sort of like a, like a dark period if you yeah. want to say that. like we've gone through trials as a team and with me and Chris and our family as well um and yeah when we've gone through that sort of thing when we couldn't find the words to pray we worshipped yeah we were on our on our knees crying before him mm. worshipping him and I think I think yeah I just think it's it's such a big part of our lives that sometimes you get so caught up with doing stuff and being busy not so much at the moment but back <laughs> in normal life you get so caught up with being busy and doing life that you yeah. forget to you forget to pray and it's good to I just have like worship music on in the background and I'll just sort of start singing along just kind of unconsciously and it's sort of getting back with him and worshiping him mm -hmm. uh, I just yeah just encourage people just to really sort of have to worship music on where you can and just forget the sort of self-consciousness that you may feel because there is so much self-consciousness of am I doing it right am I going to look silly doing this if I lift my hand am, am I going to be a bit weird and it's yeah just sort of forget about that and just focus on your relationship with him yeah that's really good and Emma have you got anything else as well you want to add to that just to encourage um well, obviously, what the guys have already said about, you know, worshipping at home is, is a big thing. Um, I think the only, the only other thing that sort of comes to my mind is that um, 
God's created us all to worship. So we are all worshippers. And I think it's just where are we directing it? Um, no one on this planet walking um, is not a worshipper. Every single person is because that's how we are by design. And that's yeah. how we created that to be. So it's more a case of, um, I think, the where where is that worship being directed? Um, and we've all got the ability to do it. So it's, it comes from desire, I think, as well. It's just, again, go, going back to... I call God, he's my source. He is literally my yeah. source. And I see myself as a plug and he is the socket. <laughs> and I have to regularly charge myself yeah. in the source to be fed so that I could then fill. Yeah. Um, I just I think the only thing that I can say, like, like I said, the guys have already sort of said it really, but um, it's just go back to the source. And I think a lot of it also comes from when you, when you find him, you find who you are in him. Yeah. And then worship is just, it's just, it's just there. It just, it just flows out, out of you. So all I can say really is just spend as much time as you can getting to know your creator and the yeah. one that has designed you to be a worshiper. Yeah. That's really good. That's really good. Thank you all so much for sharing your stories. Um, and I love that, that, I mean, there are similarities, but there, there's such a difference between between our stories and you know it's the same with last week with the, the guys I spoke to last week everyone's story is is so unique um and yet there are the same threads where where it's every every person has to find that place where it you click where where it's real to you uh, and, and where you suddenly realize that you didn't have to like Dan was saying you didn't have to just uh, go along with the congregation but it was real to you because, um, and like you were saying, Emma, because you got to know your creator. Um, you know, and, and, I, and I love all that. I love the, um, the, the, the uniqueness of, of, of your stories and, and the people who are watching as well. The uniqueness of their stories. Uh, yet there's this same thread that, um, that, that God is always calling us to him outside of songs and meetings and things. But it's just, you know, that, that time where it's just us. Uh, uh, where the greatest connection can happen. And I think what's interesting as well, and I think that it's probably come through in, in all these stories without really uh, intentionally meaning it to happen, is that a lot of the transition or, the, or the, the, the growth that you had have come through difficult times. Um, you, I mean, you shared where, where you, that, that, that time where you, you're on your, on your knees before God for like two years or whatever it was, uh, getting to know him and like uh, the same with you, Diane, where, where, where you pursued that, uh, finding that secret place and like for, for Kirsty, for you and Chris as well, particularly like the, the, the season that you've gone through uh, uh, when Monty was born, you know, it, it seems to be that difficulty uh, produces real growth in worship, regardless of whether we like it or not. And no one really likes difficulty. But the reality is that difficulty produces that freshness and the and, and life in our worship life, which I think is quite interesting. Um, but thank you guys for joining me. Um, it's been a real pleasure hearing your stories, um, and uh, we'll, we'll see you again sometime soon when we all get to meet together at some point, whenever that is. <laughs> thank you so much for joining me. Bye guys. Bye. Bye. <laughs> All right, oh. here we go. Uh, they're all leaving now, so it's just me. Thank you guys so much for worship. It, we've got a few minutes left. If you want to share some of your thoughts in the, in the comments down below, I would love to hear them. And I would love to hear your story. You know, if you want to come and join me on, a, on a, a live next week or the week after, let me know. I would love to hear your story. I'd love to chat with you. It, the, the, the incredible thing, like I just said, that there's a uniqueness about each of our stories and the way that, that God draws us closer to him and the way that we find our way closer to God that is not based on, I mean, it sounds kind of strange to say this, but it's not based on meetings or songs or uh, uh, you know, videos that you see on YouTube, teaching videos or whatever. It's simply that, that... Uh, desire, I think it was um, Emma that mentioned it, that desire within us 
to draw closer to God. And God says, he promises, that when we draw close to him, he will draw close to us. And that's a, that's a truth and a promise that we can rely on, that when we choose to seek God, when we choose to pursue him, there's um, a, a verse in Psalm, Psalm 63, verse 1, which has become a, a, a foundational verse for, for some worship training ministry that we're doing here in Portsmouth across a number of churches and beyond Portsmouth even, um, which, which says, My soul thirsts for you. In a, dry and thir- in a dry and weary land where there is no water, my soul thirsts for you. And that is the, the core of every one of our being, every one of us has that longing and yearning for God, but it's never, re- it's very often not expressed properly. It's, it's usually expressed through hobbies or, or desires or, or for selfish intentions, whatever those may be. But it's when, when we find that desire expressed toward God and towards Jesus Christ and knowing who we are in Christ, that's when we find our fulfillment and our identity and that's when we find our release and our freedom in worship to worship God and to connect with God. Wherever we are, whether we're in a meeting or whether we're at home, whether we're in a, a, a group of people, two or three people, or when we're gathered with thousands, it doesn't make a difference because it's what's going on internally, that yearning, that desire, that passion for God that draws us closer to him wherever we are so i want to encourage you with that this evening take that away um why don't you head over to youtube this will be up on youtube very soon and watch last week's as well and recap on this week's there's so much good stuff that that uh that that emma kirsty and diane shared tonight and i think there's so much that each of us can learn when we hear other people's stories Um, even if it's just a phrase that can bring that release for you. And I want to encourage you to pursue that release and that freedom in worship because God is waiting on you to draw close to him so that he can draw close to you and release the fullness of his kingdom in your life. Thank you for joining me tonight. I'll be back here again half past eight next Tuesday. And I don't know who I'll be here with. Maybe you can tell me who I'll be with. Uh, But drop me a message down below or contact me or email me and let me know that you'd like to be involved. Thank you for being with me and I will see you next week.